Hi everybody, this is Joe with Joe's Premium Firewood, bringing you another fun-filled, exciting video. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what you need to do to start your very own firewood business. So let me get this set up here in the tripod here real quick. Here we go. So if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Uh, I make all firewood related videos. I, I have a, another firewood channel called Joe's Firewood Videos, the original. And if you like what you see on this channel, check that out, that other channel out. And uh, I would appreciate you smashing that uh, sub subscribe button. But let's get into this video. So I'm gonna start with like the basic as far as tools go. The first thing you're gonna need is a chainsaw you know at least one i recommend two because if you're out cutting and you get one stuck because sometimes you don't know which way the the uh the tension is on the log you, you can cut it free with a second one so and i would i'm going to just speak uh, about steels because that's all i know this is a, a steel ms 460 which is a pro saw it's, um 10 years old but it's my very first saw that when I started my business uh, back in 2011. And then this is a MS-291. It's a, what's called a farm grade saw, which I wouldn't go anything less than that for starting a firewood business because you're gonna be using them so much. And uh, you know, it, the, the, the homeowner saws just wear out and they're cheap and you got, you're gonna have to have something that's gonna last you. So this is what, I, what I've always had. And uh, you know, and, and one thing I am assuming about you starting your firewood business is that you already uh, burn wood and produce your own wood. So you may already have these basic tools, you know, and, uh, but you wanna like make some side money. So, but if you're not, you could, you know, you could just live out in the country, you know. So another thing you're gonna need is a source to cut the wood. You can see we got woods here. We only got like 10 acres and I have already cleared out all the dead trees years ago, you know? So you're gonna need multiple sources to cut at or, you know, friends or family or whatnot, um, or get in, in touch with like logging companies and buy logs and have them uh, brought in. But I, I, you know, right, right when you first start, you know, you're probably not gonna do it that way. You're probably just gonna start with stuff here or on friends property or family property so um, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need to know how to identify the local trees in your area and which ones are the best for firewood where i live in southwest michigan about halfway between uh, two of the biggest cities kalamazoo and grand rapids there are forests all over here and uh, lots of great hardwood so i've really uh, never had a trouble getting wood getting dry wood that's another story, you know? So, you, you know, but if where you're at and there's only pine, well then that's all, that's all you got to burn, you know? But you don't wanna be giving them the, you know, selling the junk species unless it's for like outdoor, you know, campfire wood or something like that, you know? So um, the, now the next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some land to store the wood at. And I can go, I'll go around and show you like my situation is, but, um, most likely you're going to be coming across green wood, which needs to see, be cut, split and dried and properly stored. And uh, once you start getting big, you're going to probably have restaurants calling you. And so you're going to have to sort the wood. Right now I segregate cherry and, and uh, hickory for my, the restaurants that I sell to. But then there's like my general wood. Then I got, I got bundle wood and then I got summer campfire wood so i got different spots but like i said we, we have almost 10 acres and uh i just keep it stored all around you know so and uh with you getting uh green wood you're gonna want to uh you're gonna have to know how to season it properly over the years trial and error i used to you know put the green wood on pallets and just make a big pile well then a year later i, I when i come back to get it the pieces at the bottom were still wet and they were growing, you know, everybody likes to call me mushroom boy, you know, 
because uh, you know sometimes they get. It, but that's what happens, you know, when the wood sits in a, a wet environment for a long time, the bark starts to decay first and it grows fungus on it. So um, you, what it needs to be done, you, you got to like stack it in a single row, you know, four foot high and at least a couple feet in between the next row and then cover just the top third of it with like some metal sheeting. Or sometimes what I do is I'll buy like a, I'll buy like a 10 foot long tarp that's six foot wide and cut it in half and then put the tarp, you know, the tarp just on the top and hold it down with, with boards because you want airflow in the sun to uh, help help dry it out. So another thing you're going to need is you're going to need to be able to work your ass off because it is hard, hard work. It, and if you go to my other channel, I made a video yesterday of me picking up logs. This is like this is the oak that I just split from the logs I loaded yesterday you know, or at least the front half of this load is. And, uh, you know, my back's still sore from it, but you gotta lift with your legs. So that's just, an, a, a, you know, you, you gotta be willing to work hard. And, uh, but then when you get to the point like where I am, you know, after eight years of doing it, I have been buying pre-cut logs from like six or eight different guys that are in the area, you know, cause I've exhausted a lot of the areas to cut at at least for dry wood, you know, and every year it's just been like a scramble, you know, ever since 2012, when I first started growing big, um, I I'm always playing catch up on the wood, but you know, another thing you're going to need to do is start training your customers to order early. Cause like I say, my responsibility or your responsibility is to make the wood and their responsibility hopefully to get it early, you know, so they can ensure that they have, that they have wood. Cause I, you know, I've gotten like five calls, and, and, you know, in the, uh, in the, this week from people, I want well seasoned wood at least one year. And I'm just like, that's non-existent. There's none here. It's, if somebody, somebody tells you that they have one year season wood, 99% chance they're lying to you. So, you know, once we, I'm, I'm working on it. You know, I got so many regulars and then I have people that come and pick up. So I try to store some dry wood here. But um, then uh, another thing you're gonna need is a, a log splitter. You might think you can do it with, you know, with a mom, a lot of people say they can, but you know, I, there's no way it would take me three out, four hours at least to split all this which took me like one hour, probably five hours. And uh, you can, what I started out with, like I say, we have our own firewood, you can see, or a, a, a wood stove, we burn our own. So I already, you know, when I moved out here, we already had a splitter, a saw, and then uh, I, I just used what I had and built it up, <laughs> still have it. But uh, the first splitter I had was a Husky 22 ton went through three different motors before it just had a bunch of hydraulic leaks on it. The motor fell apart and I just said the hell with it. And I don't know, I bought the current splitter that I have. Then another thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need a, a pickup truck to do the deliveries because most of your customers are gonna want it delivered and stacked. And you're gonna have to get a, a full size truck. Although, you know, Mike has a Dakota, but you can hardly move any wood. You know, a trailer would be good too. I just prefer personally using my pickup truck. Just, it's just a, a, it's the amount of wood that I want to uh, move. I, I sell by the truckload. I, I don't mess with like stacking it and measuring it and then having to load the truck. You know, m any stacks that I got around here are just random length, you know, and I, and I throw, throw it on. This is what I call an oversized truckload or a Joe cord. And I just eyeball it, but if I, I did this and then I did another one and we stacked them right next to each other, it'd make like a 10 foot by four foot stack. You, you couldn't tell the difference. I, I made a video about that on my other channel where I had two, two stacks right next to each other just to show you how consistent I am with uh, eyeballing it. And I found that the easiest way. And, and that's another reason why I don't like storing it, you know, cause then I got, you know, you split, throw it on the ground which takes like an hour to split this. Then it takes, you know, 20, 20, 30 minutes to throw it into the truck where when I can just split it right into the truck and take it to the customer, that helps out a lot. 
you know. So, so that's it. Just to go back through, you need saws, a saw, or at least one chainsaw, one log splitter, and a pickup truck to do deliveries. You need space to store it at. You need to know the wood, you know. And I, I, when I first started, I couldn't tell you what an oak tree was. I, you know, I didn't know how to start a chainsaw. Now, as far as like dropping trees, I'm no expert at that either, you know. So I, I but I, but I've been taught and haven't been killed yet, right, Pam? You know. So uh, I, you'll, it's far. I'm not going to give any advice onto that. You'll just have to. Uh, learn that or try to find, you know, get with uh, where loggers have gone through and find like tops on the ground. You know, that's a way to, to get the wood. And uh, another video I'm going to be doing is if you've already got your firewood business up and running, I'm gonna get, make a video on uh, secrets of increasing your sales. Cause like, I mean, from day one, you know, I, I did a few things. I, I've always been behind. I, I, I can outsell anybody in the region, you know, but, but I don't have the wood or they don't, you know, they don't like my price, but you know, my main concern is quality and customer service, not price. That's, you know, my focus. You can do it how you want. If you, you know, want to sell more for less, that's up to you. Personally, I would rather sell, uh, less for more, you know, so I get a bigger profit margin just because of the toll, you know, it takes on my body and on my equipment, you know, cause I'm always constantly uh, fixing things. Uh, and uh, one other thing you might need, I just thought of, you know, as a quad or four wheel, you can see, you see mine right there. Just got it back from the shop. It helps for getting, getting through the woods, you know, to take this pickup truck through, you gotta make roads wide enough to turn around where that you can go in some narrow areas, you can go up on steep hills. And that's a big asset to have, you know. And that was, but it was one something that I already had that my brother actually bought it, you know. So I, we had that here. So I, I had all the equipment to start out with. It was just up to me to put my nose to the grindstone and get it done, you know. And and I was like, I don't know, was it? I'm 50 right now, and uh, I started in 2011, so I was like 41. Didn't know how to run a saw. Didn't know how to drive a tree, but. You know, like right now, this this tr truckload going out, it's the fifth truckload I've sold this week. It's today is Friday, uh, the twentieth of uh, December, and this is like an average week. And I got number six going out tomorrow on Saturday. So, and, and uh, th like this week, my first two deliveries was to a new customer, but then uh, the two deliveries I did uh, yesterday were two, two loyal customers. And and tomorrow's a loyal customer. This one's going out to a new customer. So it goes back and forth. I mean, if I just did loyal customers, I I, I can, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at oh, pretty much at capacity, but I'm still getting new, new customers in, you know, especially this time of year when it's cold, although it's gonna uh, get cold, uh, uh, warm and we're gonna end up having a, a green Christmas, so. I'm gonna show you my splitter here real quick, just so you can see that. But there's the load. And uh, you know, as far as dry storage, how I do it is this where all my dry wood goes. This is ash. I, if you have ash in your area, you know, ash can be burned green, but like this stuff is, is re what I call ready to burn. You know, so we're blessed to have have all these trees around here. I feel bad for the trees, but I hate to see them become, you know, termite food. But here's my splitter. And then this is some of the oak that I got yesterday. This is what I call semi-season. And there's another thing you need. You need to be able to tell what wood is dry, what wood is semi-season, what wood is green. And this is what I consider semi-season. This oak, when you split it, it, uh, you can see it's still pretty red or green inside, but it should dry out fairly quick. But, and there's my uh, quad trailer. That that helps for moving, you know, moving wood in the woods. You, you, you need something big, but this one blew out the bearings. Hopefully Mike gets that fixed. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. We'll see you at the next one.